Hey everyone, welcome back to Columbia City, our never-ending Pacific Northwest gargantuan project. Last episode, we built this waterfront area with a public market. Today, though, we're going to be building pretty close to it. We're going to be building Yesler Park, which is our counterpart to Stanley Park from Vancouver. So let's get started. Okay, welcome back to the program. Um, I don't know why I said that. Today we're gonna be building Yesler Park. Basically, Yesler Park is the counterpart to um, Stanley Park from Vancouver, Canada, which is one of the main inspirations for this city. But particularly, I'm taking inspiration from Stanley Park, which is this enormous park in downtown Vancouver, or right next to downtown Vancouver, that is just beautiful. It, it puts you right into the wilderness, right next to downtown, which is completely fascinating as an idea to me. The main ways that I've experienced that sort of uh, interface is, uh, first of all, I mean, it's not necessarily the wilderness at all, but in Berlin when I was there for PDXCon, I went to the Tiergarten, which is basically this huge park um, in the center of the city, and it is, it feels completely uh, like natural in there. It doesn't feel like there's much human interference, which is really cool. Another place where I have sort of felt that um, same thing is uh, Griffith Park in downtown LA or near downtown LA and Glendale. Uh, you just sort of feel like you're completely in the, in the wilderness a lot of the times, but uh, then you'll look back and you'll be looking at uh, Burbank and that's sort of how that works. I really like that idea and I, I really had to include it here in Columbia City. So here we are building what's going to be Yesler Park. We don't finish it completely in this episode. There's going to be one area that's left um, blank, unfinished, and that's going to be what will become the Botanical Garden for the city. And I tried to build it in this episode, but I didn't end up including that footage and I sort of failed. I really want to make sure that I do that build justice because I think foliage is a really important part of this city and I want to get the botanical garden where I showcase tons of foliage made by uh, asset creators in the workshop like Mr. Mason, Grey Flame, Padelmo, uh, etc. I, I want to make sure I give them all their due, uh, their due time because their assets are absolutely glorious and I want to showcase them all in a huge botanical garden, or not even a huge botanical garden, but just a really good botanical garden. Uh, right here in Yesler Park, but that'll come a different day. Right now we're sort of just building out the path network for Yesler Park. I'm just using vanilla park life paths, and they might look a little bit unnatural, a lot of the paths. We've got this one path on the perimeter that is a, a paved path, um, really awesome bike and walking path that people can go on. There's a road that sort of goes around the perimeter of the park, or at least much of it. Uh, there's part of the perimeter that isn't really touched by the road. It's just generally a loop though But that road doesn't have any parking lots attached to it and the interior of the park So nobody's really going into the park for any reason right now um, So I'm gonna have to place like some park people generators and stuff to get people actually um, visiting the park I don't even think it's uh, marked as a city park or anything. I've just got a bunch of paths here So it's gonna look pretty non-functional when you're looking at the um, with the cinematics later in the episode. But I really wanted to make some awesome, like, hiking paths here, and you'll see that I, I, I really think I manage it well. I've never built anything close to, like, something like this, uh, for hiking paths. I, you've seen sort of an outline there. I've placed some, like, switchbacks you saw, um, back there for, for mountain bikers, and... Yeah, I'm just trying to make these trails, like trails I would have fun on on my mountain bike because that's uh that's it's a good gauge of whether they're they're good trails. Another thing I'm doing is I'm making sure to add a seawall path because otherwise the commenters would kill me because that's a thing in Vancouver in Stanley Park. There's the seawall path, and mine is sort of different. Um, it looks like it's just perpetually at high tide, but that's fine. I'm okay with that. We could actually change that in the future, but for now it looks like it's just at high tide and it looks really clean the way the path is on the seawall. I've been using the parallel road tool a lot to mess around and place roads down or paths or anything like that that have retaining walls below them, which is actually a really interesting feature that makes it a lot easier to place retaining walls. You just have to mess with the numbers right, 
um, and make it, make sure that it's precise and then it works perfectly. And you don't have to align the, the angles and stuff. Now it's the ultra satisfying part of the episode. Okay, no, no. The, the ultra satisfying part of the episode, if there is one, is probably the ground level uh, portion because we're going to go on the ground level and listen to birds in the wilderness and it's going to be really cool. But this is also really satisfying because the forest brush mod is probably the best thing ever to happen to humanity. I don't know what I would do with, without this mod. I wanted something like it forever and then it finally came out and I, I remember my reaction the day it came out and I realized what it, what it actually was and what it could do and I was so excited. But yeah, it's it's been a lifesaver since and it is helping me reach my tree limit even with unlimited trees mod uh it, it makes me place a lot of trees but you know i place a lot of trees anyway it just makes the trees that i place random and look really really good uh th this forest brush here includes the newer uh gray flame trees which is absolutely um, like the, the greatest addition to my forests that I've had in a while. And then you might not be able to notice it as well, but we also have the Mr. Mason um, deciduous trees that came out recently. Uh, I think the, the horse chestnuts in there, those are, I cannot believe those trees are real. They're so good. Uh, the, the amount of amazing trees that we've gotten recently has been uh, crazy. Uh, we've also got new hardwoods by uh, Grey Flame that I think came out after I recorded this footage here those will be added to the tree brush pretty soon they look stupidly good in clusters so you could expect clusters of those in the future uh and so right now i'm creating this sort of lake on top of the uh the hill here making sure that this park has tons of hills uh, we're adding like a bunch of different um types of foliage here in the water uh, around the water i'm making sure to have like a little rocky shoreline there and then so like a rock arch. I'm not. Tr I'm trying not to detail it too much, but yeah, got tons of conifers around it, tons of um, fallen conifers and stumps and stuff like that uh, around here. And I sort of I, I left some open spaces uh, between the trees, even though I don't really need to. Like in in Vancouver, the Stanley Park is just trees, trees, trees with no no um no clusters at all it's just trees with maybe some open areas that where trees were cut down for um open spaces like for throwing balls or whatever you might do in a, like an actual park uh but okay so this is the cool part of the episode we're placing down the ruins texture next to the the paths so this is how you make paths not look stupid on grass you place the ruins texture around them uh, with the uh, the nature reserve paths from the park life DLC and it is my favorite trick I found in a while it I, I'm this is probably not even a trick you guys probably already do this but it as a general way to make paths like this it works really well if you've got tons of trees around it and I think I'm going to make it work for Calavera Beach as well because um, I'm going to be able to just have the the ground texture just be like ruins um, with tons of mountain grasses around because uh, I do want to make mountain bike trails in Calavera Beach that's gonna be pretty important because I mean like I mountain bike on trails in Orange County. So like being able to build those in the city skylines would be pretty cool. But I'm getting a little bit of start here uh, in this city, although I'm probably being pretty inaccurate in the way I'm placing these. I don't really know how trails look in the Pacific Northwest and I can't really do too much better than this regardless um, in terms of realism. The only way I could maybe make it look better is if I had a ruins texture that just looked like grass and then that made it blend in with the grass better, but I don't even know if that would look more realistic. I assume trails are supposed to be pretty rocky. Um, maybe there's some grassy areas in the forests themselves, but uh, where the trails have been carved out, I guess that that's more open and rocky um and yeah like i guess the the trails themselves are um worn but the area around them was also sort of cut out of the forest so that's why it's the ruins texture rather than the grass texture i don't know maybe i'm just justifying that but i think it's fine i think it looks pretty good and i can't really think of a better way to make paths that like this that look good on a large scale 
We also quick update on uploads. So I've been a little bit less consistent with Columbia City. This is like the second Columbia City you've seen this month. And obviously we had the new Windsor um, final videos coming out. And then we had the global collaboration, which by the way, if you haven't checked that out, definitely, definitely check that out. That'll be in the top right corner. It's basically the global collaboration between a bunch of different um, content creators. We're all building one city uh, organized by Paradox. It's pretty cool. I made the first episode, you should check it out in the top right corner. But uh, but yeah, I basically I've been a little bit inconsistent with Columbia City, apologies about that. I'm gonna continue working more consistently hopefully on Columbia City, because I've been working for the past six weeks, uh, but I'm not gonna be working uh, for the rest of the summer, although three weeks from now I'm moving, so I don't know what consistency is gonna look like after that. But right now I'm gonna have some fun in Columbia City for a little while, so expect some more videos. But that's a quick update there, and uh, after that, I'll, I'll keep you updated. Follow me on Twitter, um, just so you know where uploads are at. So I placed some totem poles down here for what is sort of like a First Nations monument. Uh, which has been suggested by a couple people for Yesler Park. Basically, the idea is that this park is on stolen land from indigenous people who used to live here because that's in all likelihood what happens. And they were never properly compensated and somebody in Columbia City's history wanted to, um, you know, recognize that. And they put a sort of totem pole first people's monument um, there so hikers could realize that they are on stolen land, but um, the totem poles themselves are almost definitely not accurate to any degree of uh, any tribes that were uh, near here. I, th those are the only ones in the workshop. I just put them there as sort of a placeholder. If there's something better, you can let me know, but um, it's something and I just wanted to have a little tiny piece of Columbia City um, history in there, especially uh, such an important piece. All right, um, let's see. It's time for the q and I think we can get a quick Q&A segment in here. Not too long, but something. Um, so if you don't know what the Q&A is, you probably live under a rock or, or new, which is also fine. Um, you can basically comment hashtag Q&A, and I'll try to get to as many uh, questions as I can in videos so you can uh, hear the answers to all of them. Okay, the first question here is from Bob Doctari, who's actually a really, really, really long-time patron. So thanks, Bob. Um, the first question, yeah, from Bob is, how often do you update your collections? Do you find doing so a painful chore? Uh, I update my collections whenever I add a new item to them, which sounds really painful, and it is, but it would be worse if I didn't do that. Like, if I tried to just update them, um, every once in a while with new subscriptions, it would be worse than just update, updating them one item at a time, um, and I feel like I would miss stuff. Yeah, it, I just update them whenever I add a new item, um, so they're constantly updated. However, my Columbia City collections are both at capacity, so whenever I add a new item to them, I have to remove an item, which I've decided is a good thing. I refuse to make a third collection. If, if I ever make a third collection for Columbia City, this series should be over at that point. Like, it's just too much. Um, so I'm sticking to two collections, because that's 2,000 workshop items, meaning about 7,000 assets in-game. So I am I am not interested in running any more assets than that. Um, so basically, I'll just continue to remove an asset every time I add one, and I think that's a good solution. Um, Awful Falafel asks, how close is Columbia City to the Pacific Ocean? Um, I don't know. I, I, I think uh, some comments would be in order here. If you guys have some ideas for that, uh, let me know because Seattle is right on the sound, but it's really far from the ocean. Uh, but Vancouver's right next to the ocean, so uh, that it could be either way there. Obviously, it's not going to have Portland geography because Portland's on a river. But yeah, it could, it could be either one of those. We've sort of got this bay in here that uh, is that downtown is next to, but that could also just be part of a large sound. Uh, it's your call. Let me know in the comments, and I'll sort of try to figure that out because that's something I haven't really fully thought through. All right, next question from Anonymous is, what is your favorite thing to build in cities and what's your least favorite? That's a really good question, Anonymous. So, uh, I would say my favorite thing to build is probably like nature stuff. I really, really like building uh, nature, like forests. Just like, this episode was so much fun. I, I had so such a blast building in this episode. Um, just because I was able to use the forest brush 
and all of my you know natural resource brushes it, it's just so fun to build natural stuff and maybe some minor detailing around it but just mostly just enjoying the nature within the game my least favorite thing is either intersections or really 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 complicated infrastructure that doesn't end up looking extremely good at the end like as in there's complicated infrastructure where you get sort of a payoff from building it there's also complicated infrastructure that functions really well and you need to build it because it functions well but it, you can't really see all of the effort you put in i don't know if i'm explaining that well but that's sort of my least favorite thing to build in the game but I, I like infrastructure builds generally. It's just that some infrastructure builds don't really pay off as much as I'd like them to. All right, that's the last question for today. So let's move into a build discussion, collab build discussion with Dirty Heathen, who's built us a beautiful modern plaza you might have seen me place earlier for Yesler Park. All right, welcome, Dirty Heathen. You want to uh, give us, I mean, first of all, where did your name come from? Also, what do you do on your channel? Um... Yeah, so here, yeah, cool. Thanks for having me on, man. Um, my name is basically just uh, my nickname from uh, when I was younger. Uh, I'm not a dirty heathen. That's more of an ironic thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, um, I'm reasonably prim and proper. So, yeah, that's where that came from. Um, and my YouTube channel um, is really... I started that just because of um, the city I was making, Minos. It was, it's quite different, um, and I thought it might be, um, it might be worth a watch. Yeah, just explain quickly what Minos is because it's really cool. Yeah, so um, so Minos was just just a bit of fun, really, um, just a city with no rules. Um, it came about. Uh, I took a break from the game towards the start of the year. I was making a Japanese city that sort of burnt me out a bit, and um, just cruising around on the workshop, looking at the different assets on there, and there's some really amazing ones for you know futuristic type cities that I'd probably never get to use in any other instance. So. Yeah, that was born out of that, and um, yeah, it's just a, uh, a super fantasy um, space city, really. There's nothing too realistic about it, but it's just been a blast. Yeah, so what did you build here? Like, what's this based off of? So I did a little bit of research on Seattle when um, you asked me to be involved, and, you know, with f almost 500 parks in the city, it, it sort of struck me that maybe a park would be the right thing to do. Um, and this was, um, I wanted to make a modern park, so it's, it's based off um, Freeway Park and it's based off Union, uh, Lake Union Park. So Lake Union Park in, in particular has a lot of straight lines and a lot of curves and I wanted to bring that element in. So it's, it's more or less off the design of, of those parks rather than an actual copy. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, it, it looks like a sort of amalgamation of a bunch of different things. Yeah, I think so, man. It looks fantastic in the in the shots. I was hoping that you'd um, put it in an area with uh, lots of foliage around and stuff like that. And yeah, it looks like it'd be a great park to go and visit. Yeah, well, thanks so much for coming on. Thanks so much for uh, contributing a build. And everybody, definitely go out, go check out Dirty Heathen's channel. It'll be in, in the top right right now and also in the description. Cool, man. Thank you very much for having me on. It's been a pleasure. Wow, Dirty Heathen did a really good job there. I'm really happy with what he built. I wasn't sure where I was going to place it within the city, but I'm pretty happy with its placement within Yesler Park. So let's just take a look at a before and after this episode. We made a lot of progress here. We didn't finish Yesler Park because the Botanical Garden is going to be part of it, um, as well as the zoo, which we built a while ago, which you see over there. But uh, I'll just give you a quick flyover. Um... Of, of the park. It's right next to Old Town here. I love the way that Old Town um, connects to it. It's It looks so natural and like it, it, it was meant to be. Um, not natural as in there was no you know, planning involved whatsoever in it. Natural as in it flows really smoothly because of the planning that uh, went into making this park uh, the way it is. So you've got this sort of fortress over here by the bridge. We talked about that in a future or a future episode, a previous episode. So I'm not really going to go into that too much. But um, we're sort of just flying around the perimeter of the park uh, here. We've got a rocky shoreline uh, with a bunch of different paths, some paved, some not. Got a lighthouse there because that was requested. Uh, you know, having a lighthouse here as well because we've got a, one already in the city, but definitely made sense there. I made some sea stacks there that you saw out of. Um, out of the gray flame rocks which i'll talk about a little bit more later but 
yeah, let's see. We've got just the beautiful, beautiful um, tree clusters there. And I, I love the mountain bike trails, the hiking trails. They look really natural here. They're not perfect, but I think it's the best I can do with what I've got in the game. I also like this rock uh, arch there on the lake at the top of the, the hill. I feel like that would be a pretty cool tourist destination uh, to go to. I would go to that as a tourist for sure. Um, but yeah, anyway, we're down here on ground level now. Uh, wow. Okay. Yeah. The vibes here are pretty crazy. Can you feel those vibes? Those are good vibes. Hiking around or whatever you might be doing here. It'd be great to get people on these trails. I'm probably going to make the park itself into a, uh, like a nature reserve park or a, I think it's called national, but whatever the park life, um, function is for, uh, a natural nature reserve like this so that people actually come in here. Cause I think I might be able to get them to actually to come in here and maybe camp or something. I could set some campsites up. Although I, I've held back on that because I don't want to put campsites so close to downtown because that seems sort of weird, but yeah, let me know if you think that's a good idea. As I mentioned earlier, there's still a lot of stuff that's unfinished in Yesler Park. Uh, like I haven't added parking lots by the hiking trails on the far side of the park. I haven't added park people generators. So it, it looks a little bit dead, but um, maybe that's realistic for right now, or at least for a couple months ago. But yeah, it looks really cool though. I, I love it. I am so happy with how these hiking trails look. I would totally love to ride my mountain bike around here. I would love that. That would be so cool, riding your mountain bike right near downtown. Oh yeah, but these uh, mossy rocks that I placed here, these are just, they're supposed to be like sea stacks um, that you might see. Although I don't know necessarily if this is geologically makes a lot of sense. Um, since if, if this is a sound, it probably doesn't make as much sense as if it's right near the open ocean um, from my understanding of, of geology. But, um, but yeah, it still looks pretty cool. And maybe that's a reason people are going to argue that it should be an open ocean that, um, that Columbia City's next to. Uh, who knows? That's probably a good reason to argue that. But this episode took so long, though. Like, I'm just thinking about this. I think I've been working on this for, like, two weeks now, which is actually sort of true of all of my previous episodes for a while. I've just been spending a lot of time on my videos and building a lot in each episode, putting a lot of thought into it. And I'm really, really, really happy with the last, like, ten videos I've put out. Uh, since the rebrand, but especially the the more recent ones I've been um, putting a little bit more forethought into. But yeah, hopefully you've been enjoying, and if you have, make sure to leave a like. That'd be highly appreciated. Subscribe if you're new here uh, so you don't miss future videos. You could uh, follow me on Twitter. Don't follow me on Instagram, at least for right now, because I'm not posting there. I have uninstalled Instagram. I'm enjoying it. Uh, you could, uh, if, if you want to support me, you could buy me a coffee, just a one-time donation. Uh, that's in the description. You could also contribute monthly on Patreon if you'd like to do that. That's an option too, also in the description. A quick shout out to some patrons, Yanis Cedric, uh, Matthew Zyme, uh, or Zymet. You can let me know if I, if I get that right or, or wrong there, Matthew. Um, Tommy Hines Jr., Logan DeHoyos, and Joe Fox. Thank you all so much for your support. And thank you everybody for your support, uh, whether you're a patron or not, whether you're just tuning in or liking or anything. Thank you all for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time for another episode of Columbia City.